welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity, your weekly dose of health news, reviews, and the latest technology in medicine. My name is Giselle Wertheim Ames, and I'll be your host. On this episode, we're going to be speaking to Dr. Kanye Makwakwa, the manager and dental liaison for education from the South African Dental Association, as well as Nika Vafai, senior registrar from the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery at Charlotte Makeke Hospital. And we're going to be talking about oral health and maxillofacial surgery. So Kanye, first of all to you, thank you for joining us in the well, studio today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and you know what, we talk about teeth. I think, mm. I'm not sure that people take dental and oral hygiene that seriously um, when we consider other elements in the body and other diseases that we're all aware of. Let's just talk a little bit about what are the you know, consequences of not having good oral hygiene. Yeah, or poor oral health. Hygiene. You know, for a long time, people just believed that good oral health was just about brushing your teeth. But what is coming up with research is that actually it is vital to have good oral health because oral health is linked to gen is part of general health in a sense. Mm -hmm. So if you have poor oral health, your general health will suffer. Your mouth is a window to the rest of your body. So if you have poor oral health, you have diseases like periodontal disease, which are now linked to cardiovascular disease. So that's heart, heart disease. That, that's heart In disease. Layman speak. I would say like more chronic diseases, diseases as well as diabetes. Yeah, so there's a link between there's diabetes a link. and yeah. And there's also a link with uh, poor pregnancy outcomes. So it's very important for so. pregnant women to make sure actually that they have good oral hygiene. And just to, I won't say go back because we've only really just started, but when you have a sore mouth, you cannot eat. Now that affects the nutrition. Your body will not have the correct nutrients. So if you do not have the correct nutrients, you're also at risk of other forms of diseases. So it is vital that people should have good oral hygiene. Are some people more susceptible to oral problems? So are we born with a genetic predisposition, sorry, Pre disposition to certain oral um, problems or is it purely a lifestyle related issue? I would focus more on the lifestyle because if you focus more on the lifestyle, you're actually able to prevent a lot of oral health problems. For instance, if you really watch your diet, you are what you eat, if you make sure that you stay away from the fizzy drinks, the sticky sweets that will stick to the teeth and cause cavities, then you will have better oral health. Now there's fluoride as well. If you ensure that you use a toothpaste containing fluoride then, and you brush twice daily effectively, then you, you will be able to prevent it. So whether or not there's a genetic predisposition, mm -hmm. with proper lifestyle management, you can prevent a lot of the oral health diseases. And unfortunately, in South Africa, we do not have fluoridated water. But if we had fluoridated water, it would go a long way in preventing diseases. Yeah, because that's naturally in the system, so it doesn't require anything of people, any discipline. Yeah, people. but the challenge as well with South Africa is that we have areas of very high fluoride and low. So if we then decide to fluoridate, we have to ensure that in areas of high, we actually defluoridate mm -hmm. because we do not want to cause problems. Other health problems, I think, yes. about the calcification of bones and, and things mm. like that. Anika, you, I mean, you're in a very interesting discipline because I think most people in their lifetimes probably would not get to see a maxillofacial surgeon. Mm -hmm. what, um, what, did, what, what is this discipline? We all know about dentists because we're very frightened. I mean, I was always <laughs> totally petrified of going to the dentist. I mean, no one, no one likes going to the dentist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't met anyone who is like, yeah, I'm going to the dentist. But um, again, I mean, you, in your discipline, I understand you will see really the worst of health outcomes. So maybe we can just talk a little bit about that. What, you know, what happens in this area when we neglect our, our, our oral hygiene and health that much? Thank you very much for having me on the show, Giselle. Um, well, essentially, maxillofacial and oral surgery is a specialty of dentistry. And um, as you said, the worst of the worst, it's essentially the surgical aspect um, of dentistry. So anything that affects the jaws, whether it's the teeth, the bone, it's related to trauma, it's related to infections and sepsis, um, whether it's acute or chronic in nature, they're essentially referred to maxillofacial surgeons. And when it comes to even rehabilitation, um, for example, people as a consequence of poor oral hygiene, losing their teeth, 
um, eventually one of the treatment options is implantology. So placing implants into the bone, which again is a specialty of the maxillofacial surgeons. So people can actually eat. Again, I think you, as, as a concept one can't really, but that's uh, you were speaking about yes. earlier. You know, If you don't have teeth, you can't eat, you can't get proper nutrition. Because yeah. digestion starts in the mouth. So if it is not properly done in the mouth, mm. then the whole cycle is actually interrupted. So your body will not get the nutrients that it actually mm -hmm. requires. And it is important that if people do lose their teeth, we have to rehab rehabilitate them to the state they were before they lost their teeth. Yeah. And, and besides implants, you can also mm -hmm. get dentures. We call them eating aids. You know, yes. if you lose an arm and leg, you will get an, uh, an aid. Correct. You know, so if you lose your teeth, you need an aid. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when we talk about that, I think most people would think, well, then you're now speaking about very old people, because surely that's, that's the mm -hmm. area of only really old people who start losing their teeth. But well, I understand this is really not true. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, given the condition of people's oral hygiene at this stage, um, a lot of people do lose teeth, especially when it comes to, it can be due to caries, due to loss, due what to is trauma. What is a carie? Just uh, uh, so layman's terms. <laughs> layman's terms, a rotten tooth. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So Cavity. Cavities, okay. right. Yeah. Hole in the tooth. A hole in the yeah. tooth to a point where restoration or they cannot be um, fixed with just fillings, um, in which case they may need uh, an extraction and um, thereafter, so if it's an anterior, like in the, a tooth in the front of the mouth, obviously people are quite, you know, concerned about cosmetic um, results, so they would like to, you know, restore these teeth without having to have a denture to take in and out, because as you said, there's connotation to old age and, you know, geriatrics in terms of having false teeth, um, but they do need to essentially replace them. Okay. I think what's also important as well is that people are living for longer, yes. so the quality of life is very important, so we should be retaining our teeth longer. Mm -hmm. Now what is also of interest is that there was a, the last national study on children was done in 2003. And it had varying re results from different provinces. Mm -hmm. But what came out is that in the Western Cape, four of the five children actually had caries. Mm -hmm. Now, you should know, well, childhood caries actually will determine future caries in a way. Like, for instance, if you find it in a child, chances are because of mm -hmm. habits that the child has or certain things, they will eventually have it in adulthood. Yes. So, so predisposition. There's a predisposition. Yes, you, I would put if it you're like not, that. If you're not bringing, and if you're a mother, if you're not, or, or a parent, and you're not really practicing good health hygiene in the house and making sure that your your children are brushing their teeth and flossing and eating, eating right correctly, food. yes, then you're setting them up really for failure when they're adults. Now, I'm very mm. interested. I mean, I read that research and I found that very interesting. Why is this specifically in the Western Cape? Why would there be that? What, is at, there social dynamic happening? At there? the time, what happened? The Western Cape had the highest. Limpopo had the lowest with two out of five children actually having caries. Now what they looked at, they looked the, the the factors that were contributing to that was urbanization. We'd go back to the diet, the type of food that people eat in the urban areas and the fluoride as well mm -hmm. because uh, Western Cape actually has very low fluoride in the water. Okay, We use our mouth to do a lot, we kiss, we eat, we do all those things so we should really look after it. Thanks so much for joining us today, it's been great to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you. We recently spoke to Professor Dale Haas. He's the prosthodontist from the Brandenburg Institute in Morningside. And we looked at the innovative work they are doing when it comes to reconstructive surgery. So let's take a look. Dr. Dale Haas is a prosthodontist from Brandenburg Institute. Specializing in maxillofacial and oral surgery, the Institute brings new hope to patients who've been severely disfigured by traumatic facial injury. Of all trauma in reality where um, or a, or a facial or craniofacial rehabilitation is appropriate. So um, anything that would require uh, an implant or some osteointegrated technology in order to do that. Um, there are obviously all the adjunctive procedures as well that uh, the team that's here uh, uh, looks after. Uh, we lucky enough to host the Morningside Head and Neck Forum where we have a multidisciplinary team that looks after uh, the patient from, from start to finish, from diagnostic through radiotherapy and we, uh, we essentially host that, that team here um, where we meet in order to discuss those patients. Though young, the Research Institute has made huge strides in medicine globally. And being the only osseointegration center in Africa, the institute dedicates itself to training future prosthodontists as intended by the founder. The institute was founded essentially around about 2005 on the invitation of Professor Brandenburg, who 
essentially discovered the relationship between titanium and bone and really changed um, medicine and dentistry forever uh, from um, replacement of joints uh, and in, in his particular case it was the replacement of teeth with, with implantology um, and his vision was to have uh, a, a group of institutes uh, that were dedicated to research, training and treatment of, of people with craniofacial disorders um, and essentially amputations of, of the face to help reconstruct and, and improve the quality of their lives and put them back to normal by a osseointegrated uh, prosthesis supported by implants. The Institute strives to give its patients the quality of life they deserve. Essentially our, our objective is to, is to rehabilitate patients who are affected from the very simple tooth extraction all the way to cancer reconstructions and um, uh, gunshot injuries and other facial trauma and get them back to where they were before as close as is, as is humanly possible and to return them to the quality of life that they deserve. You walk into Dr. House surgery, his staff is so pleasant, you know. And he also, he is so pleasant. You feel at home there, you're not going to this, no matter what's going to happen. You know, everyone is so caring. They know what you're going through. But I love speaking to people and telling them, you know, there's hope. There, there, there's so much hope there, you know. Well, that's all we have time today for. Thanks very much for my guests for joining me and thank you at home for watching. Please join me again next week for your dose of health news. Thank you.